The automotive populace wants me to tell you that you're supposed to love the BMW E30, that it is the benchmark for performance sedans, and that you must run out and purchase one as fast as you can before they're all gone. Personally, I think they were overrated, and while they do have a place in history, they just don't push any of my buttons. Now sure, there was the BMW M3, and yes, that was a good car, but a base model 325e? No, not so much. To me, they were simply overrated strudel wagons that the yuppies drove around back in the 1980s while they tried to impress their friends. That's why when I was presented with the task of hunting down an old E30 for the purposes of going off-road, my reaction was less than stellar. My budget was 2K, which meant whatever I bought would have problems. This E30 was found by a beach in San Francisco, and it was a mechanical nightmare that would take another 20 hours of work before it would be roadworthy. Now, did I think it was going to make it? No. No, I did not. After getting it roadworthy, my job was to throw on a new set of BFG tires, a homemade skid plate, and then run it from San Francisco to Los Angeles, and then over to Wheeler Pass in Nevada, our off-road destination. Now, Wheeler Pass is an old stagecoach road that's about 30 miles long. It goes up and over the mountains and has a great combination of unforgiving terrain designed to challenge your off-road vehicle, not your used BMW. So it should come as no surprise that most off-road adventures start on a road such as this. We're talking either loose gravel or packed dirt or loose dirt, or whatever the case is. Wherever you're trying to get to off-road, you need a feeder road. And that's kind of what this is. Now, the fun part of a feeder road is that in a little light car like this, you can kind of slide around, right? You can drift, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Pull the handbrake. You can do stuff that's just flat out fun. It's great. Ah, aside from the dust. Step on the gas, step on the gas. I gotta be somewhere. I'm on the up, it's going good. They can do nothing but step and stare. Drifting in nature. Drifting in nature and drifting in gravel is actually kind of fun. Until you can't see, which is kind of where we're at right now. When B of Goodrich approached us to showcase their new all-terrain TA KO2 tires, we happily accepted. You see, everyone who's into off-roading knows the legendary all-terrain TA is the tire of choice for SUVs, commercial work trucks, and of course, hardcore off-road rigs. This is a tire that's been around for more than 35 years and has earned more off-road championships than I can count. For the purposes of this test, we're running the BFG All-Terrain TAKO. Why is that, you might ask? Well, if the old tire can hold up to the beating we're about to give it, just imagine what the new KO2 that replaces it can do. So we're gonna talk about attributes of this and a little bit of the KO2 to give you an idea of how good these things are. The KO2 benefits from such enhancements over the outgoing model as a tougher sidewall. 20% tougher to be exact. This results in a sidewall that resists splitting and bruising with a thicker shoulder that extends down the sidewall to protect the core. And thanks to its new advanced deflection design, objects are kept from snagging or splitting the sidewall itself. This thing was proving to be a blast on gravel, but a severe lack of ground clearance and the narrow trail that lay up ahead had me somewhat nervous. And you combine that with a very noisy valve train and a weak clutch, and well, my concerns were definitely rising. Luckily though, the tires were holding up just fine. So right now I've come to a pretty big incline, and while wheel spin is fun, it's not what you want right here. You want these tires to dig in and you want it to grip. So what I'm gonna do is just apply a nominal amount of throttle to try to make these tires just dig in to the ground that's beneath us. I mean, it's a combination of kind of rocks, loose gravel, and, and hard pack. Steady throttle, we're climbing right up it. There's no slippage, right? See, now we've got this little arm that we have to climb up. You can see the car tilting, resting on the sidewall. Little wheel spin, but nothing major. And we kind of billy goaded our way right up that thing. As the elevation increased, so did the rocks, which proved to be a huge challenge for our rear-wheel drive BMW. Big rocks, 
two-wheel drive traction. We're gonna try to power up it. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Just before the summit lay a boulder field, and a mistake here would mean very bad things. There was no place to turn around and no place to stop, which meant going forward was our only option. And truth be told, I was nervous as hell. Now this section is all rock. Um, it's a combination of loose gravel and those kind of six to 10 inch boulders that I was telling you about. Come on, there we go, come on. When you're going over obstacles like this, what do you want to protect? You want to protect things like your oil pan, your tranny pan, right? You want to protect your rear differential. So if you can ride on tops of the rocks, okay, on the tires themselves, and keep your oil pan and your tranny pan out of harm's way, then that's a massive, massive thing. You know, tires like these are designed to take the impact of what lies underneath them. Let them do that. Let the tires take the punishment. But try to get a good combination of momentum and kind of suspension travel so that whenever you go over something, your car just doesn't slam down on stuff. You have to watch that because that's how you brace them. It really is like we're in a little red billy goat climbing up this hill. We're coming up to a point. The summit is right there. I can see the sign. 7,700 feet in a BMW with over 250,000 miles on it and uh, skid plate and a set of tires. That's pretty amazing. Just to make sure that you guys believe me that I'm here, this is the sign. Oh, 7,000 feet. Wow. 7,700 feet, the top of Wheeler Pass in a two-wheel drive BMW. Y'all should all do this. Go buy a crappy car, put some KOs on it, and have an adventure. When we first started this adventure, I didn't think we were going to make it. I'd never been to Wheeler Pass before, and everything I'd heard up until we arrived was that it was strictly for off-road vehicles, not clapped out old imports. But from the punishing rally-esque gravel to the rocky boulder-strewn trails to the incline where we lay struggling at Redline, the more we abused this little car, the more impressed I was. Not only did it get us to Wheeler Pass, but it got us up and over some of the most punishing terrain I'd ever experienced. And then, when we were done filming, it pulled up one more remarkable feat. It got us home. So, did this change my mind about the BMW E30? Well, no, not really. What it did do, however, was prove that with a little maintenance, and of course the right set of tires, any car can be turned into an automotive legend.